This is not a research project that I chose, but rather one that landed on me in 2011 when I learned that I was type 1 diabetic. Um, and so my experiences as a disabled cyborg have prompted the following series of what if questions. What if I redesign myself or my life? What if I design new interfaces like fashions or covering? What if I use my data to create art objects like sculptures, visualizations, and music? What if disabled people design their own technologies? What if I participate in new communities for social structures? What if I create new infrastructure? AI, like all technological systems, is disabled, but our design processes are still overwhelmingly geared towards optimization, perfection, efficiency, success, and the happy path. We vastly underestimate them and minimize the ways in which they might fail and the ways in which things might go wrong, leaving others to suffer the consequences of our actions. So we accept that both parts of the system are to some extent disabled, but how do we design better systems? I think there's definitely an argument for participatory design for, for the people who know their experience best to be involved um, in a more active way. So I'm asking a question, well, what does it mean to design and make money? So just a quick overview of what is generally like, this is Britannica, what they say in looking AI, and it's chiefly um, looking into the components of learning, reasoning, problem solving, perception, or language. We're thinking about this as I've used very paper a posteriori, so after the fact, it's existing, how is it affecting us now that it exists? But as the dictum goes, uh, we shape the artifacts that shape us. So I think that designers and design has to seriously consider the effects uh, that design has on our artificial intelligence. What's the conclusion to this and why is this important for designers? Well, you see that design is foundational, at least establishing sense, semblance, and understanding the complex nature of the artificial intelligence that we're working with. So when have you experienced gender bias? How and where have you experienced gender bias? So we begin our workshop with one single worksheet that's designed in a Madlib style. It walks them through some prompts to help think of an experience or a story to share. In addition to that, we've now added this weaving component. As soon as you start weaving, you actually start to give form to sort of the more overwhelming and complex story that you probably thought of. You're giving it shape. So there's something tangible and accessible and visible for people around you to sort of see. Each person picks the colors that correlated with the category that they chose, but then they get to artistically represent that the way they want. And then behind the scenes, we're like, and now we have data. Yes. Right? Now we have data that means something. 